Hey guys, Martin here. I wasn't supposed to be here this week. Well, you know what I mean. I wasn't supposed to be making a video this week. Uh, I literally wasn't supposed to be here this week, though. We were supposed to be moving into a new place, uh, which was going to be taking up uh, a good... Well, the majority of my week was going to be moving and uh, redecorating and painting and moving furniture and figuring out how to get the internet set up and all those boring, frustrating things that come with relocating. But, uh, thanks to a few hiccups uh, that have caused the move to be delayed by a week, I am able to uh, talk to you guys this week, which, you know, you could see it as a downer, you could see it as something that is, you know, defeating, uh, and usually I would look at it that way, usually I would be defeated by it, and I'd let myself, you know, sort of wallow in, you know, self-pity and, and despair, and, and I'd probably have lots of panic attacks about it, but... I have to say, you know, having grown and having been able to climb out of the pit that is depression, not completely, I'm, I'm, but I'm, I'm climbing out of it, uh, I'm able to look at this as just a setback. I'm able to look at the fact that we have had to delay the move by a week as something that is just a part of the process. It's a part of the process that we would have been very lucky to have gotten in on the day we were supposed to get in, you know, that would have been, that would have been top marks, A+, plus. that would have been brilliant, but the fact that we're a week later because of a few problems, that's not the end of the world, you know, and it means the world to me to be able to say that it's not the end, you know, to, to just have this one problem come up uh, that is, uh, it is totally surmountable, it is something that I can totally deal with and get through uh, without having to worry and without having to feel guilty about it. Because let me tell you, the one thing that I've felt with depression this whole time is guilt. That's one thing that I've really been struggling with uh, a lot of the time, especially when it comes to my work or when it comes to not working. I always feel intense guilt for not doing the things I feel I should be doing. And right now, uh, this week was going to be spent, you know, moving furniture, moving everything over to our new place and, you know, get everything set up over there. So if I were still dealing with the feelings that I was dealing with and the, the, the way of feeling that I was dealing with, I would be feeling intense guilt right now, but I'm not. And that's, that's something I really want to acknowledge. I want to take the time to acknowledge for myself and for people who might have looked at me and thought, well, he's just He's just on a self-pity party. Or people who might look at me and understand, you know, that depression is something that it takes hope away from you and it makes you feel things that you wouldn't ordinarily feel. And it might help them to see me not feeling those things. I I still struggle with guilt because right now I feel, I feel like a, a slight inkling of guilt because I'm like... Just the idea that somebody would feel positive from seeing me feel positive feels like it's... It feels like it's a lie, you know? But it's not. It's really not. I, I really do feel that maybe somebody's looking at this right now and being like, Wow, you know, 10, 20 videos of We're Still Here ago, you were crying at the slightest thing, and now something massive... Well, not massive, but, but uh, you know, you were trying to move house, which is a massive decision, and something has come up to hinder that, and you're not, and you're not miserable about it. I'd like to think that that's helpful. It's helping me, you know, it's helpful to me to think about that, to, to know that, that I'm not just giving up and throwing in the towel every, every opportunity it arises. As a result of, of not having, not thinking that I was going to be doing a We're Still Here this week, I don't really have anything prepared. I usually, throughout the week, I'm thinking, you know, what aspect of depression should I cover, or what event in my life that, you know, you can get something out of, or you can learn something from, or you can, that you know, maybe there's a good lesson there, or maybe it's a, just a good summary of what depression does to a person, you know, but, but this week I wasn't thinking about that, because I was just thinking about the move, you know, just getting into that new place in the most efficient you know, less time-wasting way possible. And now that that's out of the in the realm of possibility, I, I was left being like, oh, okay, so I have to make videos this week. Good. I do like making videos. 
I just don't know. I don't know what to talk about with this we're still here. I don't know what to talk about. Uh, so this is going to be a bit of a short one. There is one thing I did want to talk about, though, and it's not so much about depression and it's not so much about, you know, you and me. If you're watching this because you're going through depression, it's not so much about what you and I are feeling, but it's about the people around us who may or may not be trying to help. I, I saw a comic somebody posted the other day, which was uh, it was a series of events where somebody who was going through depression and who was at the end of their rope was asking somebody for help and asking somebody for sympathy, or not even asking them, but somebody was offering their sympathy to them. And every time they would do it, they themselves would feel a little more hopeless. You know, every time they would give hope to somebody else who was feeling down, they would start to feel worse because they would they don't have anybody to turn to in this in this scenario it's really important to remember the people who go out of their way for us the people who support us you know from your therapist to you know your best friend to a sister to a mother to a father to an uncle to a wife to a husband the people to an internet friend in a chat room that is just one word on a screen that happens to make you feel whatever they do intentionally or otherwise that that make you feel like the world isn't completely askew and off the rails and that there is a point to all of this and that there is no point to giving up we have to remember these people and we have to remember them and and, and while we may not understand it while we're going through it sometimes especially with depression I often refer to it as a war. We don't really know why this war started. We don't really know why this fight began. We don't really know why, who who fired the first shot in this scenario, you know? who, who Where did the depression come from? These people that you meet are with you in that fight, this confusing fight that none of us know where it started. On uh, You know, none of us really know why it's still going or how it ends. But these people, the people who choose to throw their lot in, in with us, are in that fight just as much as you and I, just as much as anybody. And we have to remember the effects that war has on people. Obviously, in this sense, war is a metaphor, but it still has an effect on people. It's still a fight that they're suffering through alongside us. But they don't have the same support system that, that we do. Even if we don't have a support system, if people choose to throw their lot in and, and try and help you and just give you a shred of sympathy or a, an ounce of light in a time where there's nothing but darkness in our lives, we have to remember and be grateful. Maybe if we can't do it in the moment, we have to remember to do it afterwards when all this, all the dust has settled and, and the fighting is over. Right now, you know, where I'm at, I'm at a point where I'm like, so many people have tried to help me and I don't know how to be worthy of that. And uh, we have to remember these people. We have to remember the fact that they tried. We have to remember the fact that they have nothing to gain from just helping. And they have a lot to lose. Because it's it's painful to watch something like this happen to a person. If you know somebody with depression and you've tried to help, thank you. If it's not gone well, I'm sorry, but thank you for trying. And uh, I have I have to say, you know, if I if my wife weren't with me, if my friends weren't with me, I don't know if I'd be here. It's important to remember the the the, the fact that they tried, and it's easy to look at it and say, well, it's easy to think about it and say, well, it's not helping. I don't feel better. You know, they they can try all they like, but it's not going to fix things. And maybe that's true, I don't know. But you have we have to appreciate them afterwards. We have to think about it. We have to take the time to acknowledge the fact that they tried. And I just want to say thank you to all those people. I, I don't know who else, I don't know who, how else to say thank you. But Marianne, my wife, obviously, she's she's done everything she can and it's hurt her. It's been to her detriment at times. <clears throat> But uh, she's tried. She's tried so hard. She's fought so hard, and you can you can tell from from just knowing her that she's 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 suffered for it, 
and she shouldn't have had to, but she did, and I can't begin to tell you how grateful I am for the support that she's given me. And I wish I could say that to every single person who's supported me in any way. My good friend Katie, Amelia from over on the East Coast, we don't talk as much as we used to. When the depression started, it was like I was talking to her every day because she she just wanted to help me and I, I probably pushed her away because I was like, the less people who are involved in this, the better. But that, she chose to help, you know? She chose. She chose to help. The, the person was still inside, but everything around me was just this, it was me putting my guard up and being, and, and just being like, nobody can help me, so why try? But she still tried. And it was invaluable, it was so helpful, and it helped me, and it, it, it probably kept me alive. And there's been so many people who have just tried in small ways. I just don't want to forget these people. You know? I don't want to forget the people who fought for something that is so abstract and small as me. But they still fought for me. So if there's a way, if there's a way that you can show appreciation for them, you, I mean, I'm not telling you to be like, go out and appreciate your friends right now. If it takes time, it takes time. But just remember, remember the things they did for you. You're not alone in this and depression will tell you otherwise, but you are not alone. And my friends and my wife and my family have made sure that I didn't feel alone in all this. And that is everything. And my stomach's making noises. So I'm probably gonna go have breakfast. Uh, but that was my, we're still here for this week, and I'm sorry that it was probably a bit short and abrupt, but I was not prepared, and I'm hoping that next week, well, I don't hope to not see you next week, but I hope that things go well for me in the move, and that that can be a thing, and then that can be done next week, and then I'll get back to talking to you guys the week after, but from the 19th till I believe the 24th or the 25th, uh, I'm not gonna be able to make videos. That's the... The new hiatus is, is that's when it's going to be uh, around Halloween, just before Halloween time. And uh, then I'll be back by the end of the month. You guys take care of yourselves, okay?